For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put cool things into your game. I'm going to show you one way to bring in objects that don't move, and I'm going to show you how to um, get animated um, user vehicles, for example, and how to get them to a drive. I'll begin with the um, stagnant items, right? So like a hut, if you wanted to build a hut or have a hut or a building or any kind of object in your game that doesn't move necessarily, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Sketchfab. This website has um, user collections um, shared and that sort of thing. Um, you definitely want to sign in, uh, sign in with an account of sorts. And then when you search for something, so you search for a hut, you're going to then choose licenses and check these right here. This means free, so it's going to sort these all out by freeness. <clears throat> so I'm going to look at, say, these uh, village low-poly huts that look kind of cool. And for the sake of simplicity, what you're going to do is choose download and look for FBX files. If you don't see an FBX file, don't go there. Don't bother. There's a lot of different things you have to do, whereas an FBX is very simple. All right, so... It, there's so many things out there, so just go back and try again. So we're going to go ahead and download this, and you're going to want to download this directly into your folder for this project. And you want to download it, you know, in your D drive, so forth, into the Assets folder for the project. So Assets folder, right next to where the terrain demo was, I'm going to put Loggers Low Poly. And then it's going to come down as a zipped file. Um, many times before maybe you've seen us do this you open the folder all right you see contents of the folder right click extract all you want to extract those folders files basically it's unzipping the zipper sometimes if you click in source there might be another zip in this case there was so let's go ahead and un extract that too that is 50-50 um, sometimes it is sometimes it isn't so there we go. We have our models uh, ex extracted. So we're going to close these up, return back to um, Unity, and what happens is it automatically puts them in. Okay, so we're going to go back to Assets, and I'm going to see I have Loggers Low Poly Hut. You're going to go to Source, <coughs> under Export, and here it is. Um, and you drag it out. Now we have our cool Low Poly Huts. And you can scale these up and down and do whatever you want with them. You can duplicate them, right? So if you copy-paste, you can have multiples. That sort of thing. All right, so that's one method. The second method is called the Unity Asset Store. And this method is pretty unique because it actually works in tandem with your project. So Unity Asset Store, you're going to sign in over here. Make sure you sign in with your Google button. And you're going to search for things. So in this case, I'm going to search for buggies. Um, and what you're going to do is down here on the right hand side where it says pricing check free assets and you're going to find that there's this free version of RBK realistic buggy kit um, it tells you that it has car controls which is really nice that means you can control it um, and I already have open in unity what you're going to do is you're going to um, hit add to my assets and you're gonna it's gonna show up here and a realistic buggy kit <clears throat> choose download and then import press import again And then it shows up. Now we can close this. We can close this now. It shows up in your project um, over here. RBK, Realistic Buggy Kit. <clears throat> You're looking for the folder called Prefabs. Prefabs, in any case, is prefabricated object. Under Vehicles, you will see that I have here 
a buggy that is mobile. We don't want to use that. Uh, mobile means that you're going to need a tablet or phone. The rest of them are regular prefabs, monster truck and so forth. So I'm going to pull out the monster truck and put it down. All right. And what we're going to do is make sure that this checkbox, active control, is checked. Uh, that allows us to drive it. So if I press play, let me show you what's going to happen. Okay, um, it flew in the air, I can tell you that much, because what happens is there's a little hit box here that catapulted it into the sky. So I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. Press play again. And there it is. All right, so if that happens again, just raise it up a little bit. Now, watch, as I walk my per my character, I'm also driving the truck. So if I walk backwards, the truck drives, right? That's how that works, okay? So they both operate at the same time, all right? In order to drive the truck and not be the first person, what we're going to do is we're going to do this trick with the cameras in order to show... And see how I have this tab, these tabs up here? Game tab has a display 1 through 8. So if I go through display 2, that's my other camera. Display 3, that's another camera I placed a little while ago. Display 4 is open. I'm going to use display 4 for mine. You would probably use display 2 or 3. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to add a camera to this truck. So click on the truck itself. Oops, be in the scene mode, sorry. Be in the scene mode. Click on the truck itself. We're going to go... Uh, game object camera it's going to put it some odd location here what we're going to do is we're going to nest it into the truck so here's the camera camera one uh, rename it for healthy reasons call it truck cam all right and remember what i told you about display what i'm going to do is i'm going to put display three or four in my case over here and so when i go to display four that's not it I'm going to make sure it's display 5. There we go. Display 5. Uh, display 5. There we go. And yes, because it's, well, it's not on anything. That's right. So here we go. You can see the little display down here in the corner. But if I click the game, you'll see the display here. If I want, I could do a, move the panel down like this. Right? So I can move that camera a little bit better. Right? So watch this. If I take the truck cam and nest it into the truck like that and it's called nesting then I come over here and put zero 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 it's going to be right on the truck nice and easy you don't have to go fussing I'm gonna to go to the back side I'm going to turn it to face the truck I'm going to make it taller I'm going to point it down that sort of thing all right and as long as my game tab shows display five and I press play I should be able to operate this vehicle all right if I want to just have fun and place another camera I could do so so I call this one um, raised cam maybe I don't know um, let's find it where is it it's right here I'm gonna raise this up, move it over, so I can see like in like from from afar the truck driving around. So I can observe what's happening. This over here. Alright, so and we'll call that one display six. And in my game I'll go display six. And now you can watch from afar what's happening. So I'm display six, I can see my truck, I can see my person riding around. It's pretty funny actually. They're gonna collide into one another. Alright, so you see that that's what's happening there. Okay. Uh go back to my camera here, go back to scene. Maybe I'll move this closer together so we can see it. So display six, I'm gonna press play. And now I can see the two things happening at the same time. If I want to go back to my first person character, I go to display one. If I want to go back to my truck, in my case it's display five.
and there you have it. What's important to remember is that you want your camera that to be locked onto the vehicle, you need to have it nested inside the monster truck prefab.